I want the nice, the, the big leaves that aren't, that don't have any yellowing on them. They start to get tough and bitter down near the bottom once they get too old. But I don't want these tiny ones up on the top because they, I don't want to take it before it's prime. Our farm is really based on the CSA model, and that's community supported agriculture. And so the, the CSA concept is basically people support the farm financially at the beginning of the season, so we're not taking on debt to fund the startup costs every year. Then they're sharing the risk with us, and then we're delivering every week as wide a variety as we can all through the season. My name is Jonaki Fisher Merritt, and you're on the food farm in Renshaw. And today we're putting together a, a delivery for our CSA members. I prefer bean plants that aren't this big. They're too big. It's too hard to find the beans. The big task of the day is picking the green beans, uh, yellow beans, actually. So that's the most time consuming part of our delivery. We've sold vegetables wholesale all along. My, my parents moved here in, in, to the Duluth area in 75. My dad started working at the Whole Foods Co-op in 1976. So we've always sold produce to them and, and our growth and the co-op's growth has really gone hand in hand and we've kind of developed that market together. whether it's the co-op or all the restaurants in town that buy vegetables from us, that they're willing to work with us and willing to be consistent customers for us. And they've really done a great job in, in trying to, you know, go out of their way to buy local produce. So we're really fortunate that way too. Yeah, so this is the cooler area so it's got refrigeration but it's also earth sheltered so that really cuts down on our energy use uh, and you know in summertime like this we don't have a lot in here in winter this will be stacked all the way to the ceiling so these bins here is what we store with through the winter and we'll stack these five high so these will hold like a thousand pounds of beets or 800 pounds of carrots so I think what I'm most proud of is the volume and quality of food that we produce and the way that we are able to treat the soil and, and, the, and the ground that we work with. You know, not split, nice and even, um, consistent. So these, these look really good. I don't ever remember specifically making a choice like, okay, I'm going to farm full time now and that's what I'm going to do. It, it was just, the more I did it, the more I liked it and the farther in it you are, the harder it is to see, <laughs> to see a way out. <laughs> Our goal is, is trying to get to a point where we're, we're providing a decent living for ourselves and people who work here and provide high quality food for people in this area. You know, we don't want to get to a point where we're so big that we have to start shipping stuff other places. We want to be working cooperatively with as many people as we can and so some of that is our customers, some of that's our CSA members. And I think we're, we're doing pretty good. I really believe that, that high quality food is everyday food. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to supply a restaurant that's a really, you know, expensive, super fancy place that people might go to once a year and have this incredible meal. But I feel a lot more excited by making sure people get good quality food just on a 
everyday basis. Being a small local business, we wanted to differentiate ourselves and not be the chain restaurant. So we started looking and reaching out to say, well, how can we buy from our people that support us, the people that come in and eat at our restaurant? You know, so it really was enlightenment every day, one by one, over the course of 10 years that have brought us sure. to do this yeah. kind of big system we do today. Yeah. It wasn't an overnight. Right. And that's the other thing that I try to have farmers realize when they want to supply yeah. restaurants. It's like, these people are s super busy. This is a really complicated thing. You, you can't just show up and say, oh, here, here's this stuff, take it from me. Well, you I can know. tell you what happens when you do that, because it <laughs> happened to us in the beginning. It sat in our cooler and nobody touched it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had to go in and show them that a whole stock of broccoli gets broken down, and then, yeah. you know, well, what do I do with the stems? Well, the stems have great flavor and great yeah. nutrition. It's just you don't want to serve them yeah, as right. giant woody <laughs> stems, you know, so you have to become a little more creative. And then I think we both owe a lot to kale, don't we? We do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one is, thank God for kale. Right. That's you. one of my favorite dishes right there. Mm -hmm. This is one of the originals with uh, the red flannel hash. Yeah. And uh, red flannel hash was put on our menu back in the low carb craze with Atkins, oh, right. probably in 2003 right. or four. And we wanted to give like a healthy hash brown, but nobody wanted potatoes then. You know, so I mean, it was this sweet potatoes, carrots, beets. Beets were kind of a superfood, I think, yeah. or one of them was, I don't remember, that superfoods came out. And uh, so we were just really, you know, putting it together. And it's a very basic roasted vegetable dish, which is total comfort food. All of our red flannel hash is cut by hand. So we're looking for a one inch dice. We opened as embers, which when we did, it wasn't really drawing people from all over with the word of mouth and the talk that, uh, you know, you need to really thrive in this business. So we, we served a regular clientele. It was some basic food. But of all the things that I did wrong, I got them out of the way while I ran Embers and it wasn't kind of in the spotlight. I made tons of mistakes through business relationships, being naive, sheer tenacity kept us going and my wife was a key player in our success and she never takes the spotlight and uh, I've learned that you know, you have to give a lot of credit to the people around you because we had this good core team and we had people that were taking care of the customers, but we went to work for a long time for negative money and, you know, how we stayed in business is incredible. You know, you just, when you're down to the wire and you, you are at that crossroads, you have to dig deep and realize that, you know, relationships and people are what make you successful. Your own, your own, uh, you know, ego and everything has to be put aside. What I try to do is keep the, the failure. It's fine if we fail a lot. It just as long as I keep them fairly small. So when we try different things, we're not, we're not betting the whole farm on yeah. that, that experiment. We're, we're starting small. Well, you know, we, we had, we put in so much effort to growing your own food. I mean, we have thousands and thousands of hours and dollars into growing our own food. It's an amazing process to look at, and we've right. learned that we're not successful with farming. We've been successful with marketing, and it's been fun, and they've been displays for people to maybe take home and do at their home. Uh -huh. But farming is, that's the one that I, I say is harder and worse than restaurants. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You know, the benefit is super basic. It comes through in the flavor of the food. And that's one of the things I've always appreciated. You guys focus on the whole package. The vegetables aren't just a garnish. It's an important piece. It's nice to have that valued, you know, once it gets to the restaurant level.